The only event where you can set a land speed record officially recognized by motorcycling's governing body is the annual Mike Cook shootout at Bonneville. But on the eve of Guy Martin's arrival, it rains. Racing activity is suspended. There's nothing to do but wait for the salt to dry. Two days later, it does. And we're live, broadcasting from the legendary Bonneville Salt Flats for the world famous Mike Cook Shootout. I was here at half time. Still pitch black and there was no one here, but I was here at half time. <laughs> no one cleaner than me. All the world's elite speed machines are here, and records in different classes are already being broken. Entry speed, 218.8. Literally, we call it the best of the best. If you can't qualify for a record, we really won't accept your entry. All the way from Grimsby and Lincolnshire, Guy Martin is aiming to take the Triumph Rocket Streamliner into the record books. Good luck, Guy, and give him hell. He's in the electric car. It's the size of the barbecue. This is 82.3 KJAZZ on your FM dial, where the hits are smooth and golden, just the way you like them. For Guy's team, running this week comes with added pressure. The current record holder, Zach Attack, are here. And although they've been developing their machine for 13 years, owner Mike Akatif wants this to be its last outing. It's just simply dangerous out there. That's why if we go 400, we're done. We're, we're going to retire, absolutely. Guy's bike is checked by the safety scrutineers. The potential speeds are now higher, so Guy needs a drag racing specification helmet and wrist restraints to stop his arms flailing around in the event of a rollover. Too tight? Ah, okay. For the first time in five weeks, and in front of the world's press, Guy is towed out to the course. Okay. Some damp patches remain in the salt, making the streamliner hard to control and shocking the normally cool-headed guy. No! Whoa! So loose, he was trying to dig his own roots and trying to fight to get it out of the road. And I got it, I got it the first time. I thought, oh, I was a bit near. And the next thing I know, I'm, I'm on the side without no warning. On. It's part of it. It's just part of it. We were just towing him in slush and he wanted to go again. But when it tips over like that, you get the oil running out of the engine sumps and you want to just make sure that, that everything is okay. So it's just good practice to, to come back here and give everything a once over. The team work fast to get the streamliner ready again. And Guy heads out for a run. He hits 209 miles per hour, but the machine struggles to rev cleanly. One of the engines has no oil pressure possibly caused by debris in the system after the bike toppled over. Eight hours later, and the team are still trying to cure the problem. We're used to this. You know, I'm, I'm, I've got a production development background, so you spend millions of hours developing a production car or motorcycle. You know, you gotta expect things along the way. Guy has been in America for five days and only done one run. It's not his usual rate of work. Yeah, I'm just a bit paid off. It is a science project and it's, yeah, it's not a race team. The mechanics work through the night to fix the issue. I can't bother, boys. We're putting another engine in until four o'clock this morning. 
By dawn, the engines have burst into life once again. It's the final day of the Mike Cook shootout and Guy is determined to try a fast run. Nobody is watching more keenly than the current record holder, Rocky Robinson. For most of us, it takes a while to get up to real high speeds. He's already gone pretty fast, 274, but you know, to add on another 130 miles an hour to that isn't easy. You gotta pay your dues along the way, which all of us do some way or another. <laughs> Guy prepares to make what he hopes is the fastest run of his life. Okay, let's go. Get right behind him. She's well. She does crash well. The streamliner became unstable when the rear wheel lost traction at 70 miles per hour. Despite multiple impacts, the cockpit remained intact and kept Guy safe. I didn't do anything wrong. Are we okay? Can we go again? Yeah, it's usually with conventional motorbikes, it's, you crash and it's. Tarmac Sky, Tarmac Sky, Tarmac Ambulance. But in this, it was quite, um, yeah, just a roller coaster, just round and round and round and round and round and stop. Oh. It was just wet, soupy, salt. You know, looking at the data, the traction control just couldn't keep up. You know, he's getting into the turbos. And then he went down and went over and hit the tail, and that kind of spun him around, and then he went back up and high sided the other way. So it was really a double high side. Local legend says bad luck at Bonneville only comes from one place. They said about this salt witch, she's not being kind to us, she's making us earn it. I think she was kind to us when we came here first. She's all just um, cuddly, yeah, you'll be all right. And we came away thinking, oh yeah, we've, we've sort of half got this, we're going to be all right. And then we've come here this time and she said, no, no, I don't like you this time, you're going to have to work for it. And um, work we have. With the rear wheel now out of alignment, and unrepairable, the team have to call the record attempt off for now. So Matt, what are we saying? We're calling it a draw. I think that's an optimistic view that it's a draw. <laughs> Maybe the salt one today, salt but one. that doesn't matter, we'll be back. We know that if we have a dry course view to hit 300 easy. Yes. Someday the conditions will line up, the bike will be there, the rider will be there. I want to do it. Yeah. I walked it 400 miles an hour. You've mm -hmm. got a unique way of looking at the world that allows you to go for something like that. I think it can be you. All right. Patience, man. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank Still, you. Still, it's been an honor. Thank you, an honor. man. No, thank you. It's been you. awesome. <laughs>